Hi, I'm Rod Roark, board certified plastic surgeon in Dallas, Texas. Welcome back to helping you become a better you. Well, we hear all about the deep plane facelift and what does it mean and is it really something different or new? Well, I will say that it's not necessarily new, but it's certainly hot and trending on social media. So let's talk about you know, the, the deep layer facelift and what that really, really means in, in, in real life and, and, and how do you apply that to what I would say is what's your ideal facelift? I mean, it should be something that's safe, versatile, give you consistent results that are lasting long-term, and it should be customized to facial aging. And I think that's the most important thing. And I will tell you, the, the ideal facelift for you is someone that'll turn the clock back about 10 years based upon your aging, your preoperative facial analysis. And I will say that's more of a lifting and filling, lifting the deep layers and filling the central face selectively and customizing that to your neck. That's your deep plane or deep, lace, deep layer facelift. And when you see a patient like this that's got a full round face or you have one that's very thin, has a thin space, do they need the same operation? Absolutely not. They need vector planning. They need to be place so that you can restore the mid facial shape in a way that they both look natural. So the full round face is somebody that needs a deeper layer facelift. In this case, it's a deeper layer SMAS facelift and you're doing a SMASectomy or you're lifting the deep layers and you're lifting them more vertically and, and also outwardly. And that's really, you know, you're planning it based upon the facial anatomy of that patient. So you're lifting the deep layer and you're selectively putting in small amounts of fat so you can really shape and contour that patient's face and doing the same in the neck. So you're doing a deep layer lift in the outer aspect and filling centrally. But in contrast to another patient that's got a massive weight loss, and of course, this is a thin patient, are you gonna do the same thing? Absolutely not. This patient needs volumizing. So in this case, you're gonna be doing a deeper layer, but you're gonna be stacking that leap layer and putting it, pulling it more vertically and shaping it, but you're not gonna be removing things. You're gonna be lifting and filling, not only the inner layer, but the outer layer. And so those are the types of facelifts that again, give you a longer result, but also give you a natural result. So you're lifting and filling, but you're stylizing it based upon the anatomy and the precise way it was uh, the patient aged. And I call this precision placement and precision pacing because when you're doing facelift planning, it's all about the preoperative analysis. And of course, I do these under anesthesia, general anesthesia, and I plan everything preoperatively, harvesting the fat, what ancillary procedures we do, and then how I dissect the face, how I do the, the, the neck lift, and what type of deep plane or deep layer lifting I'm doing, and then the fat contouring, and then the tempo of how you do your face, eyebrows, and then how you precisely do that safely under general anesthesia, you know, the hemostasis, how you vector it, how you place your, your closure, and then how you do one side of the other, and doing all of that under a general anesthesia. So you take a patient like this that has a thin face, but you're vector planning and actually shaping her face and neck and jawline and doing it precisely based upon her, uh, her facial aging. In this case, she has central facial fat loss and she uh, had aging of her eyelids. And so we did her uh, eyelids, lower face and neck lift and softened her chin, did a chin augmentation, and reestablished re her jawline. These are all things that you do on every patient, and it's different. And then you can reshape based upon the preoperative analysis of the patient. And I can't overemphasize that. It's not the technique. It's not the technology, it's the technician. It's the plastic surgeon that's doing the facial rejuvenation that gives you versatile, safe, consistent, long-term results. And they have to be customized to facial aging. I can't overemphasize that. And I'm just gonna go through some uh, case examples of doing the deep layer facelift, lifting and filling, three years post-op, you can see she was volumized and she was filled and lifted. Filling and lifted, three years post-op, 
facial fat compartment, selective facial fat, upper lower blepharoplasty. Three years post-op, standardized views, giving you a nice shape and contour of this patient. And you can see, you can see the consistency. Again, a facial aging, a fuller face, jaw lines, and then we centrally added facial fat. We did a deep layer facelift, and we lifted her cheeks and brought her up and, and reestablished her jawline and shape and gave her a nice jawline. Here she is at three years post-op. Another example, similar type of patient, but this patient had more facial fat loss. We filled selectively centrally, and we lifted the outer layers and gave her a nice, beautiful jawline. Males are different. The lessons we learned from males, and this is published in our journal, is that malar highlights are different. In, in, in males, the malar highlights are lower in the cheek area, and then in the, in the female, it's in the, um, not only in the malar, but it's in the zygomatic arch. You want to see that, that flow all the way from the temple. In males, you don't want to see that. You want to keep it in the, in the malar eminence. You can see those differences. So how do you do that? How do you get this type of shaping in a male to keep that masculine look? Well, you do facial shaping differently. The smasectomy is done different. It's done in, in a more vertical manner. And there's more facial fat placed centrally in these patients. So you can get vectoring so that the patient's face is vectoring without feminizing that face. And that's what you want to do. So everything is different. The same in a revision facelift. In patients that had two previous uh, facelifts, that these patients, so much of the time, you have to reshape, restore, and re resect. And these really are, are what I call the, the, the R's of secondary facelift surgery. You're sometimes resecting the scar. You're releasing that. You're refilling that central face, and you're reshaping and restoring. And that's what was done in this beautiful woman to give her a non-operative look, transferring her from that operative look to a non-operative beautiful face. And that's what you want to do in these patients that really sometimes are coming in as facelift cripples. You're shaping and restoring their face so they look better, feel better about themselves, and then get on with their lives. So in my hands, an ideal facelift of one that it's not just a deep plane or a deep layer, it's one that's versatile, that's safe, consistent, long-term results that last eight to 12 years, and everything most importantly are customized to the aging of that specific patient's face. That's the ideal facelift. Please give me your comments and your, and your thoughts. Happy to share them with you and enjoy.